Our next score for my final Sunday here in New Zealand is by Lindy Mayfield. And yeah, just just great to get another score from you. I know that you're really a busy guy and it's hard to make time for this. And I really, really appreciate that you were able to uh, work on the challenge this year and send something that's just so fun and just so light and and you know it just it's very nicely proportioned and I, I love the simplicity of a lot of the textures and just really has a has a nice feel to it throughout uh, I would recommend here on this very first page to trade off the clarinets as you might have seen in some of the other evaluations if you have been watching those but yeah um, Like probably, um, like, let's see, probably go second, first, second, first, right? And then you just have the first continue on from there and interact with the other players, which who should also like be first players, right? I think that they sh these should all be single wins here. Um, so it doesn't, so it doesn't like take over the texture too much, you know, cause you just have, you, otherwise you end up with a lot of weight, uh, doubling the, uh, the violins and so on. Uh, you know, nice. you got the pizzicato here, kind of, uh, timekeeping, pacing things along. And above that, you've got the triangle. So, and you continue on with the triangle quite a bit. And I would say, think about that. Right. I'm not saying to. I'm not telling you to do it or not to do it, because it is neat to have that little tingling sound. But you also have to think about whether or not the ear will get tired of it after a while. Right. So that's the big risk with um, with metallic percussion is that it wears out its welcome very very quickly. Right. So yeah, you just have to make that decision. Um, yeah, so this all works pretty well. This, you know, this little, you know, little touch here of oboe doubling the flute and then curving right back out. Of course, it's all just doubling the violins to begin with. And the violins are going to have a nicely colored sound here. Here is where I would actually have the uh, instruments flip rolls. Right? Even though everything is very soft, and so you think, well, you know, uh, flute will be just will do just as well here. But actually, what you're aiming for here is a blending of wind and string tone that um, brings color to the strings. And the lower you go with the flute, the less that happens, right? And the more that the flute tone just becomes overwhelmed by the string tone. So what I would do is just flip these and just have this group right here given to the oboe and this single D sharp given to the flute, right? So uh, that way, you know, you just have a warmer uh, crescendo and diminuendo here, and then you just have a little pop here by the flute and, and then doubling right in here, which is fine. You know, once you get to the A sharp and then up to the D, you're gathering strength in the, in the, the flute's tone is going to complement the oboes better. From that point on it doesn't and you might as well just come in on this g natural here so so you know that is that would be how i would deal with some of those problems that are presented right on this first page but the strings are fine all the way through that's all great and this is a this is actually a really great line for viola it, it was rare that people decided to just basically give this whole thing to viola and that is it's just perfectly in its register you know just like this is like the that is the stuff that violists do all day long and you know not getting so high on the cello for instance 
where it becomes a little weird not not bad but just not the not the greatest uh, most idiomatic writing but yeah but this is all really great for viola now we're getting into some serious scrubbing here we've got bass clarinet and uh, clarinet at octaves and you know there is like no marking at all about a two or one or two in any of these parts so you just didn't have time to get around to that that's okay but just be mindful of that right when you go to um, finalize your score right and maybe get rid of extra dynamic markings like right here you got this got these extra hairpins right and then now now the dynamics can sit right right where they need to okay so clarinet and bass clarinet uh, playing at octaves and that is a much better sound than two clarinets playing at octaves right it just has a less uh, sort of slightly piercing sound um, especially as you go up the scale right and it doesn't really matter about these second violins now here's a case where you're being very kind to the second violins and you're giving them lots of fun stuff to do um, but really, it seems to me that you've got things backwards here. This is really more of a first violin type of part, right? And the first violin is being, you know, sitting right at the edge of the stage and and being you know, in front of the the winds and all that other stuff. Just you know, this is just it's just a better, you know, for this kind of scoring, it's really better to give the firsts this kind of stuff. And then you know, here you got pizzicato, arco, and so on. You know, this is a case where the seconds, like this could all be firsts, and then the seconds could play this pizzicato note, and then the first could continue on, arco, right? So that's just another way of dealing with that. Hey, this is kind of fun. Um, so select all this, and uh, type shift option command 2, or uh, shift option control 2, or shift alt <laughs> control 2. All right, and that just selects all of the second voice rests, right? And then you can delete them as needed. Looks like um, you did some deleting there in the first voice. So we'll just um, fix that there. So yeah, um, just that's just a way to clean up your parts when you have um, two voice writing like this and you leave rest in Sibelius. Okay, and this is really cool. I really love the... Um, the unison, uh, or um, not, yeah, unison of, of horn and bassoon right here. That's very cool, with just a touch of bass clarinet helping out right in there, which is, um, yeah, is, is the bottom note here, right, the C natural and so on. So that is beautifully, like, this isn't going to be too solid. It's going to be fine if everybody's playing softly. You get a wonderful sound in here. Almost like this was done by two horns, right? But not so brutally, or not brutally. Brutal, brutal is the wrong word, but not so intensely, right? Okay, and this is all good. You know, Sforza, Sforzando piano, um, these crescendos, all this stuff. You know, it's a fairly straightforward interpretation of that material but you know still pretty effective you know I, I like the tambourine that's a that's a really cool touch and then you know just a um like a thumb probably be done as a thumb roll on the uh, on the skin of the tambourine yeah and so this is this is all fine i would say you know you here's a place where you could bulk things up a little bit adding more strings as you go right because as it gets much more intense um, and the winds are starting to play Sforzando and everything else and starting to punch these high notes, they'll become more, they'll look like they'll start to stand out of the texture more and more. But of course, as you start to bring them down right into here, like the winds, sorry, the uh, flutes will kind of tend to disappear under the, under the clarinets. And, and so from this point on, I would say just like hit that note on your flute and then just get rid of this because it's not really adding very much, right? And then just you know, then that is the simplest way to deal with this. And and also, once again, be mindful of like how much breath it takes to play all this stuff, right? And that's why the suggestion of splitting up 
long lines between the players. Right, right here you don't really, once again, you don't really tell us ah two or one and two. So it's the kind of thing where you could start with seconds and then have the first come in, excuse me, start with second clarinet and have the first come in here. And then, um, you know, pretty much like you could trade off or you could do some, um, like like from bar to bar or from phrase to phrase or just give a little bit of breathing space. Like, I think your second player could play this and then your first could probably play up to about here and then have your second come in um, like right at this piano, right? Or sforzando piano. Like maybe they could both hit this note and then you could continue on with the second player. Right? So there's a bunch of different ways of doing this, but you have to think about breathing in your wind players. Same thing pretty much goes for the flute. Now there's kind of nothing you can do for the bass clarinets, but they'll probably be able to sneak in a breath here and there. Or you could even just like write a breath in, right? Just like leave out a note that you don't feel is all that important. And then, yeah. And then you're, and then like they'll just sneak it there. Okay, I really love the touch here of tubular bell. Um, that starts off section A. That's really, really fun. And nice that we're getting, you know, it's a similar, it's a similar treatment as before, but it's nice to kind of have some variation as well, right? Like very similar to what we had before in terms of the way that the winds are dividing up the, um, the duties there. Now, from here, we are, um, you know, this is the place where Mussorgsky starts to expand and vary his uh, first theme, right? And you've got Celesta joining in here. Yeah, I mean, just, just to make absolutely sure, a lot of people were not quite aware that Celesta is... Uh, that it, you know, written written notes sound an octave higher, right? And the way that you got this scored is actually perfect if that is what you intend, right? If the written notes on this celesta are intended to sound an octave higher, then that is good scoring. It's not going to be all that loud, though, right? Because the celesta doesn't, um, doesn't really have... A dynamic arc so like you're putting in all the stuff forte mezzo forte crescendo but in on you know honestly like a lot of experienced uh, orchestrators don't even bother putting in a dynamic marking on the celesta because it's you know it, it doesn't really have much of a an arc so there's not a whole lot you can do so um, I'm noticing you've got You've got forte marks, so this is probably copy and paste error, but you don't need them on the staff below, right? Um, you just need one in the middle, and so long as it's all voices, right? This See this lighter blue color in Sibelius, all voices, means that it will apply to both staves. So you don't have to worry about putting one underneath. Okay, and then... I mean, you can get just a tiny bit of variation in Celesta, but it just doesn't really have much dynamic range. So the way to approach this, if you really want the Celesta to ring out and sound, you know, sound like anything, I would say it would be to bring back everybody's dynamic level. So this should be like mezzo forte, right? Uh, and then you'll sort of hear some Celesta. Uh, but you've got them pretty stacked here. You know, you've got... Um, you've got flute, maybe first flute or uh, flutes ah two, uh, doubling first oboe and clarinet, plus the first violin. So that is just going to cut like a knife. It's going to be a very intense sound, with the um, first clarinet being perhaps like the strongest of all of these instruments, just because it's, you know, getting into its um, upper middle clarino register, where it can't help but play um, play very, very strong, or, or middle to upper clarino register. 
then oboe plus clarinet is going to also just very be very fat in terms of the doubling right in here. So, I mean, it all works, but it's just, you know, just caution. And we're continuing on with the tubular bell hits. And that's great. I would say, you know, you could make these longer and be aware that tubular bells, you know, not only, not only can the, the sound last the whole bar, but you can also just add pedal, right? And the pedal not only... Um, it not only sustains the tone, but it also works really beautifully with uh, Sibelius, uh, the Sibelius um, playback engine. Works really great with tubular bell uh, sustain pedal. All right, so now we're starting to get into the second theme, you know. Yeah, and this is nice. I like the build, like you are really letting the music do what it needs to do. This stuff here on Celesta, if it indeed is intended to sound an octave higher, is going to be fine above violins plus flutes, right? And this is just all pretty standard doubling. If you're going to put that much doubling on the second violins, I do think that you need to have to add some support to the violas as well, because otherwise they'll just be very, like, they're very unequal in this combination. And the same thing goes for here, really, when you think about it. Like their bassoons and bass clarinets are just kind of, at this point, you know, they're checking their Facebook on on their iPhones. So, like, you could give them something to do right in here. Okay, and I like the way that this is split up. Um, notice how it's going up to a note that is, like, in red. And, yeah, I mean, a, a good clarinetist, a good pro clarinetist can play this without any problem. Okay, so that is all fine. I kind of don't, I don't understand why you have this beautiful doubling in here on your second violins and then you drop it out here, right? Maybe you forgot to add that, right? You could have just easily put that right in there like that, you know what I mean? And it, now all of a sudden, voila, everything is balanced perfectly. Right? About the only thing that we're missing here is just that we don't have the, um, you know, we don't have any more doubling here on flute but since these lines are kind of crossing I would say just put in these um, like just continue on with this doubling right so this could be um, you could do this right right and then that works a whole lot better. This is this is a little ambitious for the for the violas, but like not totally not totally irrational. What I would do here, you know, just frankly speaking, is to have the cellos play the first three notes, right? Taking it up to a G, and then have on that G, then you can just you can just start here. Um, with like trading off between okay so it would look like this right? it's kind of fun that I've got your Sibelius score so let me just tinker with this alright so we um, get rid of this Okay, uh, move this back, and then make this advance this forwards to right here. Get rid of these first two pitches, and um, that can be just a simple eighth note, right? And then we put the treble clef right here, and see now that is way way easier to read. For the violas right and it's totally possible of course you could be giving the violas this part and then having the second violins play that and then that's even better i think right so anyway um that would be kind of a way of making that a lot smoother on this next page we got some seriously tingly kinds of sounds now being aware that this is going to be two octaves higher than written and one octave higher than written, right? If that is exactly what you intend here, 
then that is what is going to happen. All right. Now, if you had, in, had intended this to be sounding at pitch, then these pitches would be two octaves apart. Right. So if this was, if notes. Uh, written were the ones that were intended to be sounding in concert pitch and then you're going all the way down to almost the lowest note possible on celesta which is kind of funky right but if this is intended to sound an octave higher then you are then it's great then this is fine uh, you know for some type some excuse me for some types of playing um, like if you just really want that beautiful shine you might want to avoid the first octave of the celesta entirely because it has like a, it it you know it it does go lower but those those bell like tones don't really have any depth it's kind of like the like when you get the um, get a, a glockenspiel that has you know that goes down to G like between G and C written middle uh, written middle C and the G below it the you know the sound has a way of kind of swallowing its resonance. Um, all right, but that's not the case here, but it's going to be pretty intense, right? Um, and, you know, flutes plus violins, this is all great. And then, then you know, once again, just really ambitious scoring in terms of the violas. And, you know, I would, here I would really divide things up just the way that happened before. You know, if you're going to do that in the bar before, do that here. Like have the cellos take the first three notes. And then take them over here again, right? Um, that might be a better way of doing it. Yeah, in fact, you could just go cellos up to here, violas taking the top, and just staying in treble clef. And then coming back here with the cellos and just having the cellos continue, right? That would be a, a fairly painless way of dividing this up. Yeah, and um, I really like the way that you jump up the octave here. Um, but you know what that does is it separates your celesta and your uh, tubular bells by two octaves. And that kind of creates a kind of a space in the middle. So, you know, play with that. See whether or not you might want your celesta to also uh, go higher than rather than lower. You know what I mean? And, I, and I, in this case, I think that your mock-up will tell you something pretty useful. This division here of the clarinets, that's something that you could have been do doing earlier, right? And and this is, of course, this is really a nice way of dealing with some of those problems because it's like clarinet can play these kinds of arpeggios all the time, so it's just no problem for them. However, I mean, is there any reason for the bassoon to be playing this high B flat and, you know, and doubling the oboes, right? You would be better off going A2 oboes on the B flat and A2 bassoons on the G. Right? You just get a much more stable sound there. And now here, this is all fine. You've got these guys in octaves. But I mean, if you're going to do that here, why not do that here and just have the bassoons? Because I guess you just don't want that much of a low end, do you? But still, it's just, it's it's a lot of effort to just be playing this one little thing, right? To just, the, the bassoonist is going to be very nervous just hitting that B flat softly, uh, staccato, no preparation, no walk up to it, just bam, just hitting it and getting the intonation perfect, and also having to double with the oboes who have very fussy, precise intonation, right? It just makes it all the more nerve-wracking. So it's it's just not the most opportune part here for bassoon. All right. <laughs> all right, now we're getting to this really cool part. ba da ba bum ba da ba bum Okay, and yeah, bassoons with cellos, that's all fine. Add a little bit of trump, trumpet and horn support in octaves, that works great. And yeah, so you're kind of giving all the harmony really, yeah, I see how you're, you're splitting it up there. Um, you know, oboes and clarinets doubling each other, and then flutes above, and then harmonizing the firsts and seconds. That works great. That's, that's a, that is a really excellent approach. Lindy. Um, now here, for snare drum, uh, do you really intend a buzz roll, right? I mean, you get the effect of just a regular roll from, um, you know, from snare drum, but yeah, but if you intended a buzz roll there, it's a pretty long buzz roll, but yeah, if you just intend to roll there, then just have your triple beams, right, and you'll get the right effect there. And, but I do like the uh, surge of energy that the snare drum provides there. 
Then finally, our mini apotheosis. And we get to the end of Lindy's entry. And Lindy, you know, if you had had time to make a complete entry here, I would have been, you know, overjoyed to uh, to evaluate the whole thing. So, yeah, so um, maybe in the next... I, I get the feeling the next uh, challenge will probably engage you and make you want to do the entire thing, <laughs> okay? Because each section... Uh, it's a it's a piece that has four discrete sections, and each one is enchanting and just pulls you into it more and more and more. And I I cannot wait to see what you would do with it, right? Um, so uh, violins. Here we've got a situation where we've got octaves and we've got harmonization in the uh, in the middle strings, and it's it's a it's a place where like since you're putting so much weight on the octave below, right? We've got flutes, uh, hopefully this is Atu, flutes uh, doubling with first violins, okay? And then you've got oboes and clarinets doubling with each other. And, you know, this is all great, except that, like, why can't we have, why can't these pitches be played by the violas and these pitches be played by the cellos? Right there's there's no reasons why the why the cellos couldn't be I mean and some of this is like uh, doubling anyway right so yeah so like the cellos could come in here right supporting until you get to this point where it becomes the same pitches or they the pitches start to telescope right and then they get to be the same right around here so I would just say work this out put this. Uh, into a lower, like, like, excuse me, turn this into an octave with the second violins doubling the oboes and clarinets. And then, you know, here you've got all this lovely low horn stuff. And, you know, I mean, it just is screaming out for the, for more lower strings to come in and support and double so that this doesn't just become, um, you know, all about the very loud, very firm brass sound here, which is all the more reason why this should be doubled by the first violins and given more power, right? You just like, I would say the strings should double in the simplest and most direct ways, right? So uh, this bass clarinet right in here, this, sh and this should be like double basses, right? And then bassoons, um, and um, you know, got like the viola sort of doubling that an octave higher. Work this out so that that this is doubled by the cellos, right? And then, um, and then the viola is taking over this higher harmonization, and then just keep that just the way it is and make it really simple because like there's no way that the strings can really compete with the trumpets, but it's still it's just good to have like an, a, a coordinated string tone, right? Within our lower strings. And yeah, and then that will work a whole lot better. Uh, and like, have try to maybe have a destination a dynamic here, right? Um, like right here, pianissimo. Right, it should be more like this. Or triple P, or I'd say triple P for your uh, brass. Uh, and then double P for your strings and winds, right? Um, or lower winds. And then I think that that would be a really beautiful way to back off. And then this right here can just be piano, right? So anyways, great score, Lindy. Um, like you have been with the community for a long time and I just um, don't get a chance to catch up with you that much. You sent me an email, I think about a year ago and wanted some advice on something and I really apologize for not following up on that um, and you can come back to me with that message when I get back from vacation uh, if, you, if it's still useful to you or if there's some other project that you need to have evaluated in the group or some other kind of thing or any particular advice that I can give you just uh, hit me up again all right because I'd love to hear from you and it just was really great teaching you uh, as part of the uh, book launch a few years ago so uh, so yeah so so just you know thanks for entering this please consider the 2020 
orchestration challenge and and thanks for supporting here on patreon it's just amazing to have you as part of this and along for the ride and i hope all the stuff that i'm putting out there in that group and in the community is really helping you because yeah i mean you just really have a lot of talent as an orchestrator and i think you should just continue to build on it and continue to you know try to get your works performed and and to uh, be part of your music community where you are so you know thanks again and now on to the next entry Thank you.